right, so we just got a last second question coming in from Forrest. How about some principles slash concepts to help with offense? A number of principles have really improved my defensive skills, particularly with guards, such as distance management, keep knee elbow connection, preventing people from turning my frames into levers, or getting levers on me in general, and trying to maintain good alignment. My offensive game hasn't improved correspondingly, and I'm impressed with how Danaher's stuff keeps offense and as a high focus, things like the principle of two dilemmas, etc. Okay, so we've got maintain the elbow connection. Yeah. So you break their knee elbow connection. Changing frames into levers. So managing distance. Yeah, managing distance. Yeah. So you want to manage the distance offensively, which means bring people close to you so that you can launch your attacks. Uh, we got changing frames into levers. So you want to do that offensively. Uh, gaining access to levers. Also yeah, yeah. want to just do that offensively. Which in turn would break their alignment. Break their alignment. Yeah, so if you're going to maintain your alignment, you want to break their alignment. Um, Forrest, the answer was inside you all along. Yeah, uh, so we're, looking, <laughs> we're being a bit dicks here. Yeah. Uh, but the principle we're referring to here, is, so hopefully this will actually be helpful, is the one of reverse engineer. Yeah, if you're any of these concepts we're talking about when it comes to defense, yeah. I mean, it's a universal application towards jujitsu. So yeah, no, none enemies. of the concepts we talk about are defensive concepts, yeah. right? Like, they are, the, you know, alignment is a universal concept. You need to have it for yourself, you need to break it yeah, when you attack your opponent. It's your body's ability to absorb and apply force. Yes. So, absorbing is usually meaning defensively, really defensively applying and then apply it. Yes. Yeah. So, Obviously, yeah, some of those, uh, the uh, principle, uh, if you will, uh, the idea of like the dilemma or trilemmas where you're forcing the opponent to make a choice between breaking their structure to prevent being swept, which then in turn will give up possible submission opportunities or further control, mm -hmm. or them just keeping their arms in tight to keep their alignment, but they're going to have to give up position. Stuff like that's very good. I don't know if we've talked about that one particularly, but that one's definitely one that's been... No, yeah, so like that, that's definitely something that uh, we can uh, we can add. I mean, we do refer to it in the, the various yeah, it modules. Has, it's you're like breaking alignment. You're breaking alignment. Yeah, so the, a, a, a broken alignment, like, de facto creates a dilemma. Yes. Right? Because you cannot uh, substantially defend yourself against everything when your alignment is broken. When your alignment is good, you kind of can. Right, like if I'm just, you know, positioned like this, and you can't get to my neck, you can't get to my elbows, you can't move my base. My posture's good, my structure's good, my base is good. Yeah, there's, there's no real dilemma for you to create. Once you break my posture, I can stay here in broken posture, in which case you're gonna do something to me, or I can take my arms and move them, and then you can do something to my arms. So I, I'm either not gonna fix my posture and something bad's gonna happen, or I'm gonna fix my posture and something bad is going to happen. Same thing with my base. If my base is taken away and I'm starting to go over, that's a dilemma. I can choose to fall over and accept the sweep, or I can choose to extend my arm. And if I give you limb extension, you can potentially submit me. But that all always comes back to the idea of I'm constantly aware of my alignment and I'm fucking with someone else's alignment. So it's the if, if it helps someone to put it in those terms, which it, it, I'm not like, I'm, Please, I'm not trying to say that it doesn't. Like, it absolutely does. Like, uh, no one way of describing the, you know, the, uh, like the underlying mechanisms of jujitsu. No one way is going to uh, make everyone understand just it, on the level that they need to every time. So, you know, the Danaher's stuff is great. The Damian Maya's stuff is great. John Thomas's stuff is great. Like Ryan Hall's stuff is great. I think our stuff's pretty good. So, which, uh, yeah, whichever, whichever method you're using for describing the, uh, you know, a systematic process and a concept-based process that gets it into your brain in a way that allows your body to execute at the time, use that. Uh, Absolutely. And I think yeah. it's also important to note, because you had mentioned that you feel that your defensive skills have improved drastically, but your offense hasn't been leveling up with it. That's natural, that's always gonna occur. And I also think it's easier for your defense at first Much better because yeah. you're in control of yourself. Yeah. There's gonna be very specific technical stuff you have to do when your alignment's completely fucked up in a bad position when you're like bottom cross face with an underhook and side control. Yeah. You're gonna have to have some real technical awareness of how to recover from that. But we always talk about jujitsu is that it's about first learning how to control your body and keep yourself in alignment. Yeah. Then you look at ways to break your opponent's alignment. Then you look at ways to move forward and actually move towards submission. So now what you're dealing with is a opponent that's fighting back, 
that's trying to keep themselves in alignment, regardless if they understand the concepts or not. And now you're going to have to look at very technical ways to be able to force those alignments to be able to break yeah. their alignment. And so it's not uncommon, specifically looking at our gym, where I have a harder time sometimes submitting four stripe white belts because all they do is defense and they're scared to do stuff. They're scared to attack. Yeah. Every time that you start to move for offense, you're committing a certain amount of momentum, shifting your center of gravity. Yep. You have to open your arms up. If I just do this... I can't attack. No. Yeah. But if I want to try and pass Rob, I have to at some point start moving into that range and shifting everything forward and that's going to make it easier to uh, also get countered. Just like in boxing, if I do like this, you you're can't. not going to hit me, but I get countered when I extend and I start to open myself up. So I think people get their blue belts and they feel more confident. All of a sudden, I start to destroy them a lot more. <laughs> yeah. But they are getting better at jiu-jitsu. Yeah. They're just now starting to actually open themselves up more to go on the offense. So I, I wouldn't stress about the idea that your defensive skills are increasing. Yeah, like offense is just fundamentally more difficult to develop than defense. The timing is greater because you are more like, like the, t the demand on the timing is greater because you, you've got to try to figure out what somebody else is about to do when they've got a couple of options. Whereas the defensive stuff is a lot more clear. You're, you're less reacting to somebody if you're in proper alignment defensively. If you just stay really shelled up, they kind of have to like, poke and prod at you to try to draw a reaction and as long as you keep your reaction small and you keep your, your knee elbow connection your frames and all that it, it, you just don't have to react nearly as quickly uh, and just the, the sort of the instinctive like fetal position sort of stuff that people will do even if they're not trained uh, that works really well it's just muscular contraction whereas the coordination required to like manipulate a limb and you know, get around somebody and get to a dominant position it's just a much higher level of requirement. And this, this, this isn't just jujitsu, this is everything. Like in military terms, the amount of overwhelming force you need to dislodge it, what's called an ensconced defender. So like if you're, you know, to use a Ryan Hall analogy, trying to lay siege to a castle, um, it's like depending on the environment, it's anywhere from 10 to one to 25 to one. It, that's the amount of overwhelming force you need. And that's kind of how, yeah, that's why we use the, the idea of what's the score. Because if it's three to two, it's probably not enough for me to submit you. We gotta get it to three to one. Ideally, we wanna get it to three to zero. We need an overwhelming amount of force that we can apply to a poorly defended structure to be able to reliably submit people. So it'll just take you longer to get there. Uh, and yes, the dilemma principle is great. Um, the, or trilemma or whatever, like uh, whether you wanna focus on that or you wanna use that to inform your understanding of breaking alignment and utilizing uh, posture to attack structure, structure to attack base, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're, it, it's just gonna take you a little bit longer. There aren't any concepts that we could add. It's just focus on applying them. Yeah, I think like if you're watching John Danner's stuff and some of the ways that he's phrased it has connected well with you, then that's fantastic. I don't yeah. think we can necessarily just uh, like we can like certainly we can't do give you another them. like yeah the, the dilemma thing yeah, is, and, yeah and they're certainly like to a point where like as they've talked about that stuff it's not going to do you much more good now for us to just parrot the same information and give it to you yeah I know that certainly with some of our stuff it can be very broad at first because it is such a universal approach the yeah. goal is that as you focus on modules that. Rob does explain and talk about how we're focusing on access and levers on the body, separating knee over connection, affecting their base alignment in general, yeah. and sticking to that and trying to really focus on honing your skills inside. So like if you're working on the shoulder clamp guard or uh, working on two on one control, you really focus on that and you get good at it. The problems that people usually start to face is they practice just a little bit of everything yeah. and they're not particularly that technical. And so the concepts are great, but if you don't have the technical ability with it, so it's very let me let me try to offer one thing that just because this is a conversation I recently had with a couple of students, um, and well, and actually I did a, I did a podcast yesterday with uh, Harrison, the old Rollers podcast, uh, and we talked about this as well. Is the idea that as a beginner or anyone a beginner, like any any level really, you are trying to often win battles when the battles are not winnable by you. So like I, I, a white belt will ask, how can I, like, I'm trying to get this sweep or this submission on that purple belt and I can't get it. Well, yeah, no, you, you can't, you, you're not good enough. And I don't mean like you're not good enough as a human being and you should kill yourself. I just mean like your jujitsu skill at this, although that may be the case, um, the, your jujitsu skill is not high enough to be able to have 
an awareness of which battles you need to have. And so that's the, the principle that uh, I'm gonna throw at you here is try to focus, if you're working on offense, try to focus on developing an awareness of which battles need to occur and how you need to win them. And in every position you're working on, the amount of those battles will increase in complexity and in number as you go up against better and better people. So if you're trying to do a basic like underhook half guard sweep on a white belt, the only battle you really need to win is getting the underhook. And then once you do that, you're probably going to sweep them. As they get more experience, they'll be able to shut down your underhook. You'll need to have the underhook battle, uh, either high underhook or low underhook or underhook by the butt. You'll need to know the difference between those and how to wait, win each one of those individual battles. Then you'll need to have the battle of controlling the far post, whether it's the ankle or whether it's the hand. Then you'll need to have the battle of the weight shift. And so like what starts out is, oh, I just won one battle. So you might be at that stage with a particular technique where you're aware of one battle and you're trying to win it and the other person is better than you at that battle and you're not even able to uh, move the battleground to another battle. Some battles, if you don't win them, you just have to move to a different battle. So just understanding that, developing an awareness of how many battles may potentially exist and which ones you need to fight, which ones you can skip, et cetera, et cetera. That may help you, although that is a, like, that's a simple explanation. It's a lifetime of like any position that I get into, when I first get into it, I'm like, man, I'm pretty good at making this happen. And then better people stop me. So yeah, I, even at my level, I'm like, Shit's just hard. it's hard. I, I don't know all the battles that need to occur in, you know, spider guard in certain positions, et cetera, et cetera, relative to someone who's good at it. So that's just something that will be a, a lifelong pursuit. But if you want to apply this idea to given positions and don't move past those positions until you're really aware of the battles that need to occur in it, that will help. I would say out of our roles, it's two black belts. Yeah. Like obviously offense covers a range of grip battling, guard passing, positional transitions, and then actual submissions. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm gonna say like 90% of our rounds are mean, like uh, neither of us passing each other's guards, mm -hmm. rarely getting submissions, maybe one or two submissions in an entire training session yeah. when we're actually kind of going hard at each other and not just doing like positional sparring and playing around. Yeah. Uh, offense is difficult and there's times where I'm like yeah. back and even when I've gotten a really good position, I'm still not able to make anything happen off yeah. of that. And this yeah. is at black belt level. So depending on like as Rob was saying, like as you're going up, it's just like something like guard passing. People say guard passing is so hard, and I'll say it's never going to get easier. No, to an it gets easier. Yeah, I get to white. Yeah, it gets easier because most of the people you train, like the higher up you go, the more you're training with people who are worse than you. Yeah, right. And so yeah, like if uh, right now because of COVID, I've only got three or four training partners, and they're all good. And my training fucking sucks. I don't feel like I'm getting any better. Although I know I am because like I'm adding skills and the battles yeah. we're having Our are more- Our submission rates are more like intricate. The week. It's like, but nothing's not like, happening. yeah, exactly. It's not like I'm all of a sudden tapping this guy. have gone down and uh, Yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, so hopefully we're giving yeah. you some food for thought.